Hi, it's Kisma again, and we are going to begin working with session three of the Owl and the Girl. Here are your supplies, the paints that you'll be working with throughout this 20 minute video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is paint her face and give some flesh tone also to the owl. So you can see we're using titanium white, yellow ochre, and medium magenta. You can use any uh, pink color you have, or of course, flesh paint, but I'm just showing you how to mix up flesh. And I'm going to work with a medium round brush so that you can uh, cover a nice area of space. So what you want to do is just give a little dab uh, of each of the three paints on your um, palette. I use a paper plate because acrylics dry so fast and once they dry you can't get them off. So if you use a nice permanent palette it, it, they become ruined and over time they layer up and then you end up having to throw that palette away. Whereas paper plates you can use as you see on my palette for a lot of different uh, projects without any difficulty. Okay, so a little dab of each and now I'm just going to mix them until I like the consistency. So I'm adding a little bit of water first because I like my acrylics a little, a little watery, kind of like um, water paint, but not quite as watery. And then I just mix them until I find the consistency that I really like. So I always add in the pink first. Uh, you might want to add in the yellow ochre first, but whatever. Okay, now my teacher, Terry, who's my watercolor teacher, tells us never to use our brush to mix our paints, <laughs> but to use a spatula. And I know I'm doing it the bad way, but I got caught up in the creation process. So I'm almost where I like my flesh color tone. You can see it's blending up quite nicely for just a medium, a medium tone. And now all I'm going to do is apply this to some of the outline of her face, um, not necessarily the shadow. I'm not really working with shadow and light, but really, um, just adding it where I, I feel intuitively um, I would like to add it. And as it is, it's sort of in the areas that would be the shadow, the hairline and, and the side of the face and then under the lip and uh, on the nose and just different places. So um, just add it the way you feel it needs to be added. And don't forget to get under uh, her chin um, uh, in the shadow of the neck. Now we're just going to give a little bit of the flesh color to the uh, top, the crown of the owl, but we're going to add in the sienna just to darken it um, 
So I'm just adding that to the flesh tone just to give it a second color. And now just apply it to the crown around the edge of the face um, and really uh, mostly where the shoulder or the wing would be. Um, and I also think that by doing that, what it does is it ties the two together, her face and the owl face, but yet it gives the owl a slightly darker uh, look. We're going to add some Titan buff and uh, some brown now because we want to darken the owl. And by adding this third layer of color to the owl, we can begin to define um, the shape of his head, the shape of his wings, uh, more of his body. You'll notice that along the edges, um, I'm making the paint wispy to kind of resemble um, his feathers and also on the crown of his head. So now what I want to do is I want to tie in um, the color purple because as you can see, there's uh, the trunk and also her um, cloak. So I'm going to use permanent violet to begin to outline the, the roots and the trunk and, uh, and also I will uh, use it in her face and also magenta don't ask me to pronounce the first part of that magenta because i can't but it's a little more transparent it's not as opaque as the uh, permanent violet
Now, as I begin to apply it to her face, I get the violet color very watery uh, because I want it to be translucent and I want it to spread and I'll let it um, drip and run in a controlled manner. You know, oftentimes when you're painting, you go through real ugly stages where you think, oh my God, this is never going to turn out the way I'm envisioning it. And you can blot out color and redo it. And the best thing to remember when you're painting is two things. One, why are you painting? You're painting because you want to create. And two, any mistake you make, there's no mistakes, right? But anything you paint that you don't like, you can always fix it. There's always a fix. You can white it out and you can start over. Never forget that. So now what I'm going to do is bring in the magenta because I want to uh, put that on the horizon line and um, uh, uh, just show you how you can blend things together. Okay, now we're going to begin doing her hair. So I'm just using a, a burnt sienna, a brown, any brown will do, or whatever color you want her hair to be, and also gold. Um, and we're going to be using uh, the gold um, on the owl. But get your uh, paint very, very watery so that it can run and is uh, very transparent.
Now we're going to add the same brown to the owl and you'll notice that I'm dabbing it. I'm not painting, I'm dabbing because I want it to look like ruffled feathers um, everywhere. Okay, let's take the gold now and just add it here and there on the owl to catch the light um, on its feathers. Okay, so now we're going to do our last little bit of painting here using that olive green. So get it watery so that it has more of a watercolor feel to it and begin to intuitively add it here and there um, around the pond area, the trees, and uh, the two figures. And at this time, go ahead and coax that olive green paint to do some drips down your page. And we are nearing the end of our paint session. Um, we have one more uh, or maybe two more videos. The next one, we're going to look at the background 
and then the final session will be the the last bit of details and polishing it up so i hope that you have enjoyed watching this and that your painting is coming along really nicely i will see you in session four have fun